Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley, California. This is theCUBE, OpenStack Silicon Valley. This is the event going on around the cloud, multi-cloud, uh, hybrid cloud, you name it. It's all about beating Amazon. That's what Jeff Frick and I have been talking to <laughs> my co-host. Uh, Jeff, uh, our next guest is uh, Madhu Kashyap, Senior Product Manager around OpenStack with Brocade. Um, friend of the Cube, you guys have been uh, great partners and sponsors for us in the past. Uh, but great to get, get you on the Cube here to find out kind of in the trenches what's happening with, with OpenStack. Obviously, networking is a big part Absolutely. of making all that infrastructure work for the app developers. So what's the Brocade angle here at OpenStack? So, so Brocade is um, really um, positioning itself as the next generation of um, IP network uh, virtualization. Uh, so both at the physical and at the virtual layers of networking, uh, Brocade has assets that it's leveraging and building plugins for OpenStack. So both on the switching, routing, as well as on the network function virtualization uh, pieces of uh, the software that we have, Brocade is building uh, plugins that plug into the OpenStack Neutron uh, project. So Brocade, explain how this fits in with, with the overall Brocade, because Brocade is a very large, provider to a lot of the infrastructure uh, vendors as well as customers. So Absolutely. how does OpenStack fit into all this? Right, so Broca if you look at Brocade's history and legacy, they came from the SAN uh, fiber channel space, but they've increasingly moved into the IP networking. And so as part of the IP networking, uh, you're seeing a lot more traction with uh, data center, the, the focus is on the data center networking. And you know, OpenStack naturally fits into that ecosystem and whatever, that we've been doing in IP networking, whether it's switches, routers, or the virtual routers, firewall, uh, VPN services that uh, are virtualized are part of that effort to plug into OpenStack and the data center. So give us a quick update on your take for the show here. What is, what is your assessment, professional assessment of the OpenStack event here and the community right now? No, so I've been tracking uh, OpenStack for about a year and a half now, uh, started, uh, trying to do a startup initially before I joined Brocade. Um, and so you can see the momentum and the adoption, the awareness. You know, I used to go to meetups a year and a half ago and you'd find 25, 30 people. Now there's standing room and overflowing. Right? All these and new faces. Yeah, absolutely. But they're really attracting a big community. I mean, if you look at this event, this event really was an ad hoc event. Yes. Sandwiched between Atlanta, OpenStack Atlanta, right. and OpenStack Paris. Um, and it's packed house. Yes, exactly, uh, very surprising. Uh, just trying to get even parking for right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 400 people here. So, yeah. but yeah, the Brocade is again, you know, working, we, we're working with, we have some Lighthouse customers, Yahoo Japan is one customer where they're using OpenStack with our plugins. Uh, we did a, a, a session with them at the Hong Kong Summit. Uh, we, we demoed uh, some uh, other leadership things that we've taken with MPLS, IPN, uh, IPSec, uh, VPN kind of plugins and NFV plugins. So again, uh, working with a lot of customers who are showing interest in OpenStack and data center networking. What are some of the biggest challenges that you're seeing? Because developers are not infrastructure dudes. Correct. or gals, they're right. really more about just making the app and look at the success that Containers has had with Docker yes. mm -hmm. um, and just that notion that we had the CEO of uh, Mesosphere on earlier. Right. You're seeing the tooling and some of the, the software really drive this scale out, horizontally scalable mindset of DevOps Absolutely. and it's really impacting IT. Exactly. So if that trend continues, that means the app guys are going to be in charge dictating to the infrastructure, get right. me resources and the policy the policy stuff changes, yes. which used to be in the networking. Right. So that's right. flipped upside down. Right. What's your take on this? No, no, so again, very interesting. So, you know, the infrastructure still matters. And so now, at Brocade, we're providing all the set of REST APIs that earlier used to be just CLI. And so you have a whole set of APIs that can be programmed. You can program your switch, your router, your virtual router, firewalls, on demand, create VMs. And so, uh, Brocade is taking that step to providing those set of APIs so that app developers and other infrastructure um, DevOps folks can incorporate the infrastructure into their configurations and rolling out uh, the cloud 
uh, and so on. So on the policy side, again, very interesting talk by Martin uh, Casado this morning, and, and that was a piece that was missing, and I think that's adding a lot of value to the OpenStack ecosystem. So the policy matters. Uh, so he talked about an interesting overarching policy framework. Subsystems will be able to absorb that and do their own thing, right? So again, I think that is a, and, and Brocade is very interested in knowing what, you know, how that plays out. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about the challenges of, of software defined everything. Right. When, when, it meets, when it meets real gear and real protocols and real service level agreements and, and sure, moving sure. data around. So, and, so and some of the things you guys are doing absolutely. to address those. So I'll, I'll go back to the APIs. APIs are fundamental and if you saw um, Adrian Arnell's uh, talk as well, uh, the, the first thing he had was APIs are critical, right? And so that's what we started with, providing APIs across the board for all of our products. So that will take you to that software-defined data center. You can call these APIs, instantiate links, instantiate flows, instantiate firewalls. Uh, all of that is definitely in, already happening and also the roadmap for expanding that uh, APIs. Um, we are also working, um, so the Neutron plugins that we are working with, um, that is in, in, since Havana release, we've been actually working on providing plugins to all of our assets, both physical and virtual. Um, we are taking a, a, a pretty big uh, position in Open Daylight as a Platinum member uh, as well. So again, we're doing a lot of work uh, contributing code there as well. So it's all part of that um, the, the software-defined data center that you're talking about. Right. So we are marching down that path. It's, uh, it's software, but then too, you're mentioning, you guys are involved in a lot of open source projects as well. So Talk right. a little bit about is there the culture to really adopt, embrace, and, and right. I guess embrace is really the yes. word yes. in yes. these open source projects uh, right. from what was a really proprietary, absolutely. You know, you're going from proprietary hardware to right. open source software. It's a right. big shift. No, absolutely. And uh, but one of along the, the our journey, right? Uh, two years ago, we bought Wyata, which was a virtual router company, and they thrived on open source. So we brought some of that culture into Brocade. So we are now cross-pollinated by other people with the old, older sort of, uh, you know, proprietary legacy sort of mind culture. And so you're seeing the shift in the way people are thinking and approaching problems as a more collaborative, working with the community and so on. Because now with the acquisition of Wyada from two years ago, you, you, you can see that shift happening uh, inside of uh, Brocade. And are the old dogs getting it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And really, the, the ability yeah. to leverage that for a pace of yes. innovation and, yes. and to drive yes. things. Yeah, so the, the market is forcing them, you know, competition is forcing them, so they're, they're getting on. They're getting it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for Brocade? What do you see this trajectory? What vector are you really developing on as a, from a product strategy standpoint? Sure, uh, so we are really embraced open source. So like I said, you know, we are big into OpenStack, we are uh, contributing upstream, we are working with the community, we are working on framework things, we are taking some leads on um, things around NFV, and uh, we, we even incubated a project called Service VM or Tackler, where you want to keep a pool of uh, virtual machines ready for like firewalls or VPN or uh, load balancers, so that they can get instantiated, not in, uh, in, in seconds, couple seconds instead of minutes. So that, that, that's a project we are taking the lead on. We're taking the, uh, a pretty big uh, position in, in open daylight as well. So we're really embracing the open source culture. We don't, we don't want to be in proprietary hardware or proprietary software. We want to be able to take that middle ground. Um, so also NFV is interesting because that yes. introduces the fact it's not just enterprises, service providers. Absolutely. What are the challenges for service providers with OpenStack? So with OpenStack, the scale out, the scalability is a big concern, right? Uh, there have been um, different benchmarks around scaling of OpenStack. You know, people have reached uh, 500 nodes, 800 nodes, 1,000 nodes, but you're talking thousands of nodes being able to scale at that level for a, um, for a service provider. Um, so that is going to be a scale, the, the, the HA capability, uh, performance, all of those are still maturing and coming together and, and They'll have to work uh, through that. But you're great to have you on theCUBE, Brocade. Again, we've interviewed you guys many times, certainly EMC World, all, yes. the, all the big events, and you guys were also uh, at Atlanta as well. So, <laughs> um, great to see Brocade out, out in the open source world. Uh, we've had a lot of your folks, you guys have a lot of open source proponents inside the company. Right. Most people don't understand that, but you guys mm -hmm. look like a networking vendor. Mm -hmm. But huge open source culture. Right. Could you explain 
some of the DNA internally that's driving this open source ethos? Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, so we, you know, with the acquisition of Wired, uh, now we're seeing that culture of open source because that was based on, on Linux and they built uh, the whole router uh, on the Linux platform. And so a lot of that was um, acquired into the company, spread through the company, and that DNA was definitely, uh, you know, the, the shift happening in the, in the culture and, and DNA. I'm going to do Cash Yap, Senior Product Manager at Brocade here at OpenStack, connecting it all together, open source, the network's got to run, the pipes in the network's got to have, be provisioned, and they got to run and be elastic. Thanks for joining theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.